good morning, everyone. We are so honored that you're here with us today as we celebrate the life of Katie Bond Dobbs. We are so thankful that you're here with us. It, it means a lot to the family. And this is going to be a really special day as we celebrate life for Katie. We're going to have the whole family involved in the service this morning. So it's going to be really, really special. So we're so excited that we can um, take this time to honor someone super special to us. If we can do this, why don't we just bow our heads, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you for this moment in time where we can stop, hit the pause button, and celebrate someone so special to us. Lord, we're here to celebrate the life of Katie. And we're so thankful. We're so thankful for her influence on all of us. We're so thankful for this opportunity. We can gather as a family and you can bring more healing to our lives. And we're just so grateful that we can gather in this room today. Just pray that your blessing would be upon this time. We invite your presence to be with us. We commit this time to you. We ask that you would be glorified. And once again, we thank you so much for the gift of Katie in our lives. And we want to honor her well today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> At this time, we're going to begin the service, and we're going to have um, one of Katie's grandsons, Oliver Johnson, is going to come, and he has a special reading. So this is Katie's uh, obituary. Catherine Katie Bond Wingard Dobbs was born in Tacoma, Washington on April 30th, 1948 and passed away peacefully on October 27, 2023. She grew up in Tacoma, Washington and passed away in Yuma, Arizona, where she lived for the past three years. Prior to Yuma, she resided in Chanhassen for 20 years and Naperville, Illinois prior to that. Katie had one of the most infectious and memorable laughs you have ever heard. She and her sisters were known for their laughs. She enjoyed working with her hands in her free time. She was a creator. She sewed, knitted, crocheted, quilted, and any new craft that was trendy. She loved on her family in many ways. A favorite gift was making tasty food. Baking was her special specialty as she looked forward to a sweet treat anytime. <coughs> she didn't like to eat alone and would always want to share something with you. She was adventurous, willing to try new things, enjoyed the landscape, uh, arbit arboretum, playing games, walking, and spending time with friends. She always had a Kleenex in her pocket or sleeve if you needed one. Katie enjoyed helping people and serving others. She was involved in many areas of the churches she attended. At the drop of a hat, she was there for you. She is survived by her husband of 56 years, Keith R. Dobbs, her sister, Jackie Orr Rolf, children, uh, Melissa and Chip Johnson, Chad and Shannon Dobbs, Heather and Mike Bechtold, as well as eight grandchildren, Oliver Johnson, Quinn Johnson, Taylor Dobbs, Connor Dobbs, Micah Dobbs, Jalen Dobbs, Grant Bechtold, and Nolan Bechtold one great-grandchild, Lucy Dobbs, and many special friends who all love her dearly. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Grant. I'm the oldest son of Heather, um, and Keith was not, Katie's husband was not <coughs> able to be here today, so I'm gonna read a few remarks that he had. On October 27th this year, Katie ended her battle with Louis body dementia and went to her eternal home to be with her Jesus. I've learned a lot about missing someone in the last four weeks. There's not a moment that goes by that I don't see or hear something that reminds me of her. I saw a perfume bottle on the dresser and it reminded me of how upset she got with me for trying to save space and combine two of her favorite bottles of perfume into one. <laughs> I'm thankful I only did that once. <laughs> the other day, while watching a football game, I saw the cheerleaders on the sidelines, and 
that brought back another memory. For those of you who don't know, Katie was a cheerleader. One day while ha helping to make room in a dresser for more things, I came across Katie's cheerleading outfit. <laughs> Knowing how important her sweater and skirt must be to her, I thought discarding her pom-poms would give us the space we needed. <laughs> Another thing I was thankful I only did once. <laughs> While listening to gospel music yesterday, it reminded me how even when she couldn't talk, she would hear some of her favorite songs and her lips would move or her lips would mouth the words. She loved the hymns and gave their music. When Melissa and Heather were visiting in August, I remember the three of us go, getting around her bed and having a family quartet moment. I know each passing day will bring back more memories and tears, and I will cherish each one of them. There's not a room I go into that I don't think of her or talk to her. This will never stop. I love you, Katie. I always have, and I always will. Looking forward to my home going and seeing you again. Love, Keith. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Quinn, youngest son of Melissa Johnson, and today I'll be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, through 2 Corinthians chapter 5, through 10. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving us an eternal glory that far outweighs them. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. So what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things that are done on the body, whether good or bad. And I'm Katie's oldest daughter, but I think I've met all of you. Um, I love those verses, and I had the opportunity to read those with her maybe a couple times over the last few months. And I thought, how do you sum up a person's life in just a couple minutes? So I'm just going to talk about her greatest influence on my life. And um, one of the things in those scriptures is it says, our dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. And I think sometimes death is not the end. Mm -hmm. And I think about the people that she's seen in heaven, and now her eternity has just begun. And I think when, as you age, you really start to think about that more. And when a loved one dies, you are reminded of the truth in that. And so... Um, that has been my mom's greatest influence, is that she knew them, those scriptures, and she believed in what they said. Uh, they were a hope-filled reminder of what awaits those who know the Lord. I love knowing that I will get to see her again someday. And I, um, sorry, I said dash. And so what it has made me think about is that dash, you know, my birthday, my dash, to when my day ends. So I think I just, it has really made me think about how my mom lived her life and how I want to live it very similarly. Is not as my own, but to give and serve and love other people. And so her faith was alive and real to her. And it was more in how she lived her life than really in what she said to me. Um, her actions tell me it was important that us three kids, my brother Chad and his family couldn't make it either today, um, that we have an opportunity to learn about the Lord at a young age. And so I think I was going into fourth grade. My mom had become a Christian, and we started to go to church when I was in fourth grade. And we went Sunday morning, we went Sunday night, we went Wednesday. And then they started a school, and we went. <laughs> and 
so I think sometimes we felt like we lived there. Um, but, and we practically did. But at some point in time, all of us as kids decided on our own that we too wanted to follow Jesus. And that was a rich legacy and a gift that she gave to each of us. My life was forever changed because of that one decision that I made a long time ago. And so um, my mom became a Christian during the 70s at Charismatic Movement, recently depicted in the Jesus Revolution. And um, there was a time or two that, you know, the school cost money and we didn't have a lot of money. And so my mom, I think, prayed about what should I do? And then somebody mysteriously would pay our tuition. Or there would be times we might have needed groceries and groceries showed at our front door. And there was a time, I'm sure you were there, Heather, like if a car didn't start, no, I'm, I wasn't always excited about this. <laughs> we would have to lay hands on the car and break. <laughs> and it would start. So <laughs> this is what my mom did. God could do anything. So this, this is just how we were raised. If I was having a bad day, she had this little book, uh, this little thing with scriptures. It was called like a Bread of Life or Our Daily Bread. Our Daily Bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to pick a scripture. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew just what I needed to hear. Yeah. So this is how we were raised. She was a miracle believing woman, and that never changed through all the years. It was at the core of who she was. She served at church. She volunteered. She um, she gave. And Melody was just reminding me, she was a deaconess, like, mm -hmm. at Calvary. Yep. And, and, and there were pastor's wives who had young babies and were new to church, and my mom just said, I'll help. I'll come beside you, you go do your thing, and you bring me your kids. And she did. So there's a couple families, I mean, there's one family in particular, they come, Grandma Katie and Papa Keith. And so that's, she gave. And um, gifts of love with her hands, yeah. from food handmade sweaters, crocheted blankets. She did everything, everything with her hands. <laughs> everything. And, and if she's in the watching TV in the car, there's a bag of stuff coming out. Like, <laughs> with a Kleenex or something. <laughs> and so um, she had her grandkids, and they all loved her back. Um, I'm forever grateful that we got to live near here, here when they were growing up, so they got to be with Grandma and Papa. She has influenced them by influencing us. Um, and I recently read that grief is love with nowhere to go. And all this grief means so much love is present. And for that, I am truly thankful. Um, I'm, I, yeah, this thing, anyhow. So now we will learn to mourn her absence. Upcoming weddings, future great-grandchildren, holidays and family time together. We will continue the traditions she began and have passed it upon onto us and who our kids will pass it on to their kids. So tomorrow, we will eat her famous stuffing <laughs> and her apple pie. We will have great times talking about her famous laugh. Honestly, I just wish you all could hear it. <laughs> and her sisters also laugh that way. We grew up in Washington State, Tacoma. So, and my mom lived there her whole life. So, and she moved around. So let's pretend we're at the grocery store. And my mom's <coughs> laughing in the aisle for some reason. If it happened once, it happened six times in my life. Somebody would come looking down the aisle. Katie, hey, Wingard, is that you? I heard your laugh. And they're always like, oh, no. <laughs> so. So I, I just want to thank you to God in heaven for giving us our cootie lady. Yeah. Heather's friend coined this name cootie lady 20 some years ago. So we affectionately called her cootie lady. And so I just want to say, Mom, I love you forever. Am I introducing you, Norm? Are you going to make it through the scripture? Okay, I'll leave it to Sheer here. <laughs> or there's one right there. This is an honor. <laughs> Jesus says this in John 14, verses 1 through 6. He says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. 
there's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would not have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I'll come get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you'll know the way that I, to where I'm going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where he's going. So how can we know any, can we know the way? Jesus told him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No, can, no one can come to the Father except through me. And I am Katie's youngest. Um, and I just want to share some memories. But um, So I was the youngest of three, and my brother and sister were called the Irish twins. So by the time I came along about four years later, um, the joke in our family became that I was mom's favorite, which... <laughs> but, um, but um, anyways, that was kind of a joke. But my mom and I really did have a really um, special relationship, in my opinion. We got along really well. Um, I don't know if it's because they were always maybe playing. She would entertain me, and we loved to play cards. So we would play a game called Nerds, if you've heard it, and you have to have speed. And so when you're younger, you, didn't, you don't have as much speed. So my mom would beat me all the time. And oh, I just remember getting so frustrated. So one day, she did love this story. <laughs> one day she, um, I think I must have had to use the restroom or do something. So I left and then came back quick. And we had had our, our game set up. And um, I beat her. Mm. Like, yes, I beat <laughs> you. And all of a sudden, oh, Heather, <laughs> I have to tell you something. <laughs> and I was like, and she says, I took some of your cards away so you could beat me. And I was like, oh, Mom, I remember. And she was like, that funny story. And so I always used to tease. I had to wait until she got older that I could beat her. So yeah. when, when, we were in, when they lived in Champass and we would play there still if the boys were playing and doing something. And so I was finally able to beat her a little bit. But <laughs> we did love to do that. We loved to watch old movies together. Um, when Melissa was out of the house, my brother was out of the house, we would go on weekends and get a bunch of the old movies. She introduced me to Catherine Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn, Jimmy Stewart, like all those guys. <laughs> we loved to do that. We loved to hang out. We had a lot of the same styles. Um, but it's one of those things that, one of the things that I do remember about my mom is that she was always there for me, no matter what. And one of, it's a silly story, but one of my favorite stories um, is I had had a rough day in high school and I came down the stairs and my mom always kind of knew, even when I would call her as an adult, as a mom, as an adult, she'd be like, what's wrong? She could hear it in my voice and I was always like, nothing. I mean, I tried to like cover it up. Like, There's nothing wrong, nothing. But she always knew, she always knew when something was wrong. Well, this, way, this time she could tell because I had my blanket around my neck. I came downstairs. It had been a rough day. I had my blanket. Yes, in high school, I still had a blanket. I still have that blanket. You know? um, but I came downstairs, and she looked at me, and she said, rough day? And I was like, yes. And my mom looked at me, and one of my favorite things that my mom would do is she would rock me. And she said, do you want me to rock you? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so we get to the chair, and if you know my mom, she's about five inches shorter than me, so she sits in the chair, she scoots back, and her feet don't touch. <laughs> I sit in her lap, and she gets the giggles, and now we're giggling, because I'm having to rock her, because she's too short. But she just was always there. She always knew the right words, I feel like, to tell me. There's so many lessons. Like my sister had said, she had such a strong faith. And some of the things that I remember about my mom is the fact that um, one of the verses I remember her saying so often was Psalm 1914. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. And um, my mom, she really worked with me on things because I would tend to lean towards the negative of things. And she just was always like, you know, what's in your heart is going to come out. And to always remember to laugh at yourself, to not be so serious, to not do all of this stuff, but just to remember that. And so remembering to meditate on his word and what's in my heart is going to come out. And these are the things that I feel like she taught me. Um, I also had a at a time where I dealt with serious fear of things and up 
taped above my bed every night we would read 2 Timothy 1 7 God has not given me a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and so I love that rich um, heritage of my mom loving Jesus wanting us to know him and doing living life as an example and so um, my friend Kim is going to come and sing a song that my mom <laughs> would sing I would hear her sing it around um, and it was just one of the Gaither songs that she loved but um, there's just something about service that has uh, been created to honor and celebrate the life of Katie. I just want to say to all the family, wonderful job. You did a great job. Appreciate you guys so much. I also want to take this opportunity to say great job to both Heather and Melissa. You know, one of the commandments of the Lord is to honor our father and mother. And, um, you two have certainly honored your mother very well. Great job. And I want to make this um, public not only today, but you have done an amazing job honoring your mother over the past several difficult months. Just making several trips to Arizona to be there with her. And to help your dad keep through these challenging times. I just want to say that you two have um, been amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Well, today what I want to do, there's been a lot of scriptures that have been read already. And I would like to read one more passage. And the scripture I want to share today is a scripture like all the scriptures that have been read already. That are, they give us great hope. They give us great hope. They give us hope in time of life. And they certainly give us hope in times like this, in time where we lose someone that's so special to us. 
And the scripture that I'm referring to today, we, many of us have heard before, is out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to read just about nine verses, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 50 through 58. And before I read the scripture to you, I just want to give you the context in which it was written. This whole chapter of 1 Corinthians 15 is obviously written by a guy named Paul. And the whole focus of the chapter is talking about the resurrection because there was a lot of confusion. So Paul's saying, I'm going to bring some clarity to this whole big deal of the resurrection. And right in the context of where we're going to pick it up today, there was a lot of confusion. What's going to happen to our bodies? What happens to this body when we die? And in this portion of the 1 Corinthians 15, Paul's going to address what does happen to the body. So just keep that in mind as we dive in. We'll pick, pick it up in verse 50. Then I'll just have a couple of comments, and we'll wrap it up here in just a few minutes. Paul writes these words in verse 50. We pick it up. He says, what I'm saying, dear brothers and sisters, so he's writing to believers, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. I love that. Verse 51. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. The secret is we will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment. He's talking about the second coming in the blink of an eye when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are still living will be transformed. Verse 53. For our dying bodies must be transformed into new bodies. And these new bodies will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Verse 54. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. He's talking from Isaiah. Okay? And here's the promise of Isaiah. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Verse 56. For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. And here's our closing verse, verse 57. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin, and he gives us victory over death through Jesus Christ, our Lord. One wonderful promises, amen? Yes. Wonderful, wonderful promises. And like I said, to understand those promises, it's always good to go back to the context. What is the writer writing about here? And as I said, chapter 15 here is all about <coughs> focusing on the resurrection of Jesus. So throughout the chapter, if you took time to read it, it's a lengthy chapter made up of 58 verses. Paul is touching on different aspects of the resurrection, how important it is in the life of the believer. It's a part of the gospel. It's so true. We need it. So when it comes to the verses that I just read, the verses that we just looked at this morning, Paul is letting the reader know something super important. He's letting the reader know that the resurrection of Jesus <coughs> promises us, gives us amazing promise. And the promise is this, that there's victory. There's victory even in death. Isn't that great news this morning? Even when we die as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, that's not the end. There's victory. And the victory is over what? Well, he talks about that in the text. Did you catch it? The victory is over two of our greatest enemies. And two of our greatest enemies, according to Paul, in this context, <coughs> are the great enemies. Number one, the enemy of sin. And number two is the enemy of death, that we have victory. So in a nutshell, if I could say it in today's vernacular, in today's language, Paul is letting us know that as followers of Jesus, the best is not behind us. And that's so good to know. But he's telling us as a believer, even in death, that the best is yet to come. And he's wanting all these believers to understand that, hey, don't be heavy of heart. The best isn't behind you. This life isn't all there is. But I'm letting you know because of your faith in Jesus Christ, your best days are ahead. And I just love that for our family, knowing for someone that we love so dearly and respect and her influence on our lives, that the best for Kate is yet to come. You say, Mike, well, why is that? Well, go back to verse 57, context. 
Paul writes these words, and I want to read it one more time. He says, but thank God. But thank God. Thank God that he gives us victory over sin. He gives us victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is why Katie, along with all those people who receive Jesus as their Savior, have hope. Yes. In the Assembly of God, we call it the blessed hope. That we have hope in life, but we also have hope in death. That we have this hope that the best is not behind us. We have this hope, we can live with this assurance that because of what Jesus did on the cross, because of his death, burial, and resurrection, which he talked about earlier in the chapter, because of those things, we have hope. And I just want to share with the family, we have great hope. Katie had great hope. So with this being said, I need to be just totally transparent. Today is a bittersweet day. Today is a bittersweet day. It's bitter in the fact that we're going to miss Katie. That's for certain. We've heard all the stories. We're going to be bitter in the fact that we'll miss Katie. We're going to miss a wife of 56 years. We're going to miss a wonderful mother of three incredible children. <laughs> We're going to win. To say that. Yes. You can pay me later, okay? We're going to miss a loving grandmother of eight awesome grandchildren. <laughs> We're going to miss her, a sister. We're going to miss a friend. That's for certain. That's the bitter side of this. We're going to miss her physical presence. We're going to miss that as early as Thursday when we come to the Thanksgiving table. Katie's not there. We're going to miss sitting around the table without Katie. We're going to miss those special phone calls that Heather and Melissa referred to. And we've heard it several times, we're going to miss that unique laugh. <laughs> Nobody laughed like Katie, thank God. <laughs> we're going to miss her support, very supportive. Love, 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 would do anything for her family. Would go to the extra, go the extra mile for those she loved dearly. So we'll miss that. And there's so many other things that we didn't have time to talk about in this short time of things that we'll miss about Katie. So there's that bitterness. It's tough. But I want to encourage the family, myself, friends, that it's during these times that we can find strength and we can find comfort in two places. Number one, we can find strength and comfort in this relationship that Katie passed on to us, our relationship with Jesus. He's the God of all comfort. He gives comfort in time of need. But we can also find comfort for one another. And I'm sure that's going to happen today when we go out to lunch as a family. There's going to be a lot of great stories. And what are we going to do is we're going to be comforting one another. That's why we're here. Remembering, reflecting, giving thanks to God. And in those words of thanks, we say, thank you, Lord, for the comfort of the stories. But it's not only just a bitter day, it's a sweet day. I just want to make that super, super clear today. I've been amazed with Heather's poise and just her stability over the last couple weeks. It's a sweet day because on Friday, October 27th of this year, that Katie Von Doms made a transition from what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians from her earthly tent, which by the way, that's a reference to her temporary home, her body. And she made this transition from her earthly tent to, to her eternal home in heaven. And the good news is, because of this family's faith in Christ, one day we'll all see her again. And I can just imagine I'm sure she's going to be laughing when she sees this, right? <laughs> and it's going to be so comforting. It's going to be great that she's made this transition to her eternal home. And it's a home where we have this amazing promise that John gives us in Revelation 21.4. And I want to close with this verse. John gives us this promise talking about heaven. He says, in that place, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Isn't that great? He's going to wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
There's more to the promise. He says there will be no more death. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more crying. There's going to be zero more, no, no more pain. It's all going to be gone. And then he concludes by saying all these things will be gone forever. Forever. And we're so thankful today that we can celebrate the sweetness of this time. And it all comes back because Katie had hope. And we all know that hope has a name. And his name is what? And that's why today that we can walk through these times with this confidence that this isn't all there is on this side of eternity. This is just the beginning. This is just the warm-up. This is just preparation for eternity. And I love what Paul says, to be absent from this body means that Katie is now where? Present with the Lord. And I just thank you, good Lord, that we can rejoice today as a family, that we can have confidence today as a family that her life's not over. I'd like to think it's only just begun. Amen? Amen? So what I want to do this morning is I just want to close this time of remembrance and celebration of Katie with a word of prayer. And a big part of our prayer is I just want to give thanks to the Lord that he takes such good care of us. He takes such good care of us. And we're so thankful that he has a plan for our lives when we put our faith in Christ. So let's pray in closing this morning. So Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. We just thank you, Lord, that we can come together as family. And we are so grateful for the um, friends. Some people have driven miles to be here today. And we are just, we're, we, we give thanks to those people. Yeah. And Lord, we just thank you most of all, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for, as Paul talked about in the first part of this chapter, we just thank you for the death we just thank you for the burial, and we just thank you for your resurrection, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for all those things, and it's in all those things that we have hope. We have hope. We have salvation. And Lord, we're just so grateful that Katie knew you. That Katie didn't know just about you, that she had a personal relationship with you. And that's a relationship that changed everything about her life, transformed her heart, transformed her life. And Lord, we're just so thankful for Katie. We're just so thankful that she said yes to you, and her yes will impact many, many people, even in the future. And Lord, we just thank you for these precious promises that you give us in your word. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to be with her children. Thank you for Melissa, Chad, and Heather. Pray that you would continue to be with Keith. We know that he's watching today. Can't be with us. We just pray, God, that you would give him special grace. That you would comfort Keith right now as we're gathered together. And we're asking these things in the name of Jesus. I just pray right now, God, that Keith would sense your presence. And Lord, I pray that you would fill that boy with your presence, with your love. And Lord, be with him in this challenging season. And Lord, be with the Katie's children, grandchildren. And we just thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we celebrate Katie today in Jesus' name. And everyone together said, Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. It was an honor to be together. We invite you, we can um, stay and fellowship together, talk. There's plenty of bars, there's plenty of coffee. <laughs> Take about a dozen with you on the way out. There's plenty for everyone. Share with your family. But thank you, it means a lot that you're here today. And thank you, Heather and Melissa. Job well done. God bless you. Let's have a great day of celebrating and remembering Kate.